up to number one. Yep. Pac-12, Washington. I'm going to make sure I get this one right. I'm on double secret probation. Good luck. You go after first. After how I butchered someone there early in the show. Um, so, former Husky Levi Onzerike is your number one player at defensive tackle. I'm here for this because he's the lightest one of your top five. And I know how much you value physical traits of this position. So I know. At 6'3", 293, how is this your top guy? I didn't expect it. I didn't. But... First off, I think the thing uh, I jump out at me more than anything, I mean, he's got the strength of a 330-pound guy. That's where I just kept going. They play him a nose tackle wow. a lot, where he just gets over the, the center, and you look at him and you just go, well, well, he can't really do this consistently, can he? Okay, every play, he just dominates, and it just holds guys up, just like we talked about with the other one. Just can, he's got an incredibly – quick get off and gets his hands on you so quickly that a lot of these offensive linemen are flustered before they can even kind of get in their set or anything. So he's really explosive that way. He's rare in the fact that at 290, he is a phenomenal athlete. He moves like he's a guy like 275 pounds, but yet has the strength of a, a 330 pound human being. That's where I just was, you know, totally taken away by the guy it's just a great blend of thick and athletic looking type of guy mm -hmm. I I wrote down Jonathan Allen mm. you know who what was Jonathan Allen a few years ago top 10 top 12 pick for Washington he, football team I think he was, he was top half of the he first might have been round. I mean he had to, I want to say he was top 10 for sure I want to say he might have been five or six 17 so 17 okay top half, yeah. all right so so Six three, three hundred pounds. He can He was. Or it was he came out on the combine that heavy? I thought he was even a little lower than that. But at two ninety three, would you take him and think that you had to add weight, or is he, is he okay where he is? No, I, I just think that he'll be a. Uh, to me, he looks like he's got a he's got a little weight room in him, but not like weight room in the way I go. Oh, this is really a two hundred and seventy pound man that's worked really hard to be two ninety something, mm. and it's, it's not real. Yeah, I worry about those guys. So I, I think he's just naturally become a bigger, stronger man. I, I, I do. I don't. But, man, I mean, Paul, he's a really fun watch. It's just as far as, like I said, the first step, the get off, it's as good as some of the elite pass rushers in the draft. You know, he's so explosive with the pop in his hands. You know, he's got great contact control with the offensive linemen. You know, really impressive side to side. Can two gap almost as good – is Barrymore. It's not as good, but he can he can really do it. And they asked him to do it a lot. And it's just his upper body strength to me was like wowing. Mm. It was wowing with the way he could disengage and throw people to the side and just go chase the ball down. Mm -hmm. That's where I really found it fun to watch. And like, you know, not only just versus the run, versus the pass too. That's huge. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, it, his ability to disengage and all that, I think is what separated him. And there's the disruption, there's the production, everything you want. Um, you know, and one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, good luck. Good luck. And then the other thing I always go into, and you know, you ask me about it too, is just, yeah, he's 290, but I just, I wrote his anchor versus double yeah, team. Doesn't scare you. It, 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 it was really high level where I just went, man, how is he always holding his ground against mm -hmm. some of these offensive linemen? And there's some good offensive linemen he played against there in yeah. the Pac 12. I think it's a good example that people can play strong and play fast that aren't necessarily the strongest or biggest. Just like a guy can look like a 4 3 guy, but he's only a 4 5 guy. There's some real, I mean, there's something to that, that sometimes you just forget about what the paper says about the weights or the speed because you got to trust how they look on the film. Yeah. I, and if he looks like he's three plus and if he plays that way, who really cares that he's 293 instead of 313? Well, and it's, it's like I, he was one of those where you had a look and I was like, wait, is he, what, what, how much does he weigh? Because he, he kind of almost looks like it's like a 280, a 278 mm. kind of guy, like that kind of guy. You know, so when I saw 290 or 293, I think is what I originally saw and wrote down here, I just went, whoa, okay, he's a little bigger than I, I'm thinking here, looking at him. And then, of course, you know, you look at the arm length and all of that, and then you go, holy cow. You know, I think one of the first plays I saw, he ran like a running back down to the sideline. I went, S speed is the real deal. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just, I was shocked by that, you know, but has Bend as a pass rusher. I mean, Ben to the point where I go, if you want to play him at defense end, yeah. he's going to be a handful, like doing stuff like that as well. You know, and eyes in the backfield, again, always knew where the ball was, was all over it. 
So, yeah, as you could tell, I am a big fan of him. Uh, I said, reminds me of Jonathan Allen. He will be awesome 4-3-3 technique. Okay, if so he has one gap to win, he will win it. Awesome. Yeah. Good description there. The guy before, Christian Barrymore, you said you know, 20 to 32, somewhere in the first. Yeah. I don't think you like him enough to put him in the top 10. So if, if we could go 10 to 20-ish, yeah. you don't have to make one prediction on where sure. he goes. But let's pick a couple of teams. I know you're looking at who I am, picks I'm 10 to 20. I'm pulling up right now, right. A couple right. of teams in that range that you would be like, yeah, that's, that's a good home for him. Well, you know, I think the Eagles probably got to start thinking about, you know, that position at 12. Okay. You know, I, I mean, I, I, would, I would think there's some thought there. You know, I'm thinking about the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. You know, they I have a couple a, of questions about that on Twitter. About, they, about that. They, they, they got positional need there, and I think he fits that scheme as far as Zimmer and what they want to play. So <laughs> that makes sense to me as far as that's concerned. I'm you looking know, for this Viking question. The go, Raiders go at 17, you know, a Raiders at 17 need everything on the front seven. They need everything. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, so they, they could go whoever's the best available pass rusher or D tackle. Or just anybody in the front seven. Oh, like, if, if they had the right. best front seven player available, you, you, you could be fits? like, cool. Could be. Okay. That, that's cool. But the, those are the teams, I think, that jump out to me there. Of course, we know Washington football team, you know, no, they're not going to do it. So, yeah, I think those are the teams right there that, that really pop to me. At Vikes 9090, here it is. Love the pod. Been trying to get on for a while. So, hey, made it, I what guess. What up? I guess Chris really does hate my and Florio's Vikings. <laughs> what do you think about the Vikings? I going... just hate Florio, <laughs> not you. you. <laughs> what do you think about the Vikes maybe going two nose tackles this year with Dalvin Tomlinson and Michael Pierce? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't – it's not horrible. I mean, it, it's, there's not going to be much disruption there, yeah. okay? I think that's the big thing. Um, and I'm just pulling up their, their roster all together. But – you know, I think the next, you know, the next thing I, I think with the, like that, hey, yeah, those are two big time space eaters. I don't think you're going to have them on the field together all the time. Um, I mean, you playing a running team that you're scared of that. Hey, sh- certainly could be in that. But if they're looking for that defense end slash defense tackle hybrid. Michael Bennett, Jonathan Allen type guy, because that's Michael Bennett, who's one of my favorite players ever. Mm -hmm. He's another one of the names I wrote down for this guy. And I think Bennett came out at like 270-something, and he probably played about 280. But I I, I could see that being a fit there. Yeah. I remember watching I do like the two big guys inside. That's interesting. I I didn't really think about that, honestly. It would be. I remember watching Bennett in the Super Bowl in Phoenix uh, from field level. Yeah, 49. And just thinking, oh, my gosh. How does this happen? He is the inventor this guy? of f- the play up. Yeah. That's where I started talking about on the podcast. Yeah. I was going like, this is maybe the best defensive player in football. Yeah. He is unblockable. Yeah. And he gets three sacks a year, and people don't think he's good. And I want to go, no, no. And that, that's really what started it. And then Aaron Donald came into the league. Yeah. And then it was Changed like, well, it is the king of the f- up the play. Right. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.